Do you always blame time when you can't finish a task? Saying things like, I wish I had more time, then I can do better. Or I failed because I didn't have enough time. For some reason, when people fail to do something, we blame the time or our poor time management skills. And so people will go crazy with things like time management apps and podcasts and audiobooks and blog posts or YouTube videos talking about time management hacks and tips. And would even go far as researching the routine of the most successful people like Jeff Bezos and trying to imitate them. But have you stopped for a moment and thought that you might be doing things wrong and that time is not something that you must consistently or constantly blame. To find out more, stick with me until the end of this video. Hi, I'm Munif Ali, a self-made multimillionaire who started a YouTube channel to share my life experiences and teach you how to succeed. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Truth be told, the problem with why you're so bad at time management is not because you lack an effective system. This is because time is fixed, but energy is a whole different story. For instance, why do you think most people trying to imitate the time management techniques of most successful people like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk often fail? Well, that's because even though we all have 20 24 hours, your 24 hours is not the same 24 hours that Jeff Bezos has with a huge staff. He doesn't need to do his own laundry or cook his own meal or look after his kids 24 seven. He can just hire someone to do those things. On the other hand, you would need to spend a whole lot of energy doing these type of chores while Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk can use those spare energies on other more important tasks. So you see, while you might have the same amount of time, you don't have the same amount of energy and resources. And while time can be predicted as it is fixed, energy itself cannot. Your energy right now might not be the same in the next few hours or even in the next few minutes. So instead of focusing too much on just your time management, how about sparing some moments to manage your energy instead? But before you start managing your energy, there are four things you need to do first. Number one is to find your peak performance hours. As I told you earlier in this video, we don't have the same amount of energy and it is impossible to maintain the same level of energy throughout the day. So to manage your energy, the first thing you need to do is to figure out what is your peak performance period. Your peak performance period is the three to four hours of your day when you are the most energized and have the sharpest focus and the clearest state of mind. For me, that's really easy. I'm an early morning person. And you've all heard of morning larks or night owls. These people are the ones that have figured out what their peak period hours are. So think about what is yours. If you have no idea, how about you start to spend at least a day tracking your energy levels for every hour. Rate them from high, medium and low. Write them down in some type of writing material or a journal that you're comfortable with and to review them at the end of the day to see what your time zone is as far as your highest energy level. Number two is to determine how much energy is required for each task. Your energy level fluctuates depending on how much sleep you've gotten, how much you've eaten, the quality of your rest. So to make sure that you stay productive, organize your tasks based on the amount of energy required to complete them. For instance, in my case, I usually schedule the most important and the most mentally draining task first thing in the morning, like big picture thinking, planning, strategizing what to do for the next month or so. And in the afternoon, I do tasks that require less energy, like checking my emails or dropping into meetings or responding to messages. Because I, as a morning person, know that that's when I have the most amount of energy. And as my energy level goes down, so does my discipline. Number three is rest is productive. As I mentioned earlier, factors that affect your energy level include how much sleep you've gotten and the quality of the rest that you've had. Just because you're in bed for eight hours doesn't mean you've slept for eight hours. Imagine your body as a cup, your energy as the water in the cup. And every time you do a task, you spend your energy pouring out a little bit at a time out of that cup. And when you don't rest, you can't fill that cup up with fresh new water all the way to the top again. Obviously, your cup is empty. There is nothing to be poured. And so you have no more energy to spend. And that is why it's very important to allocate some time for your rest. Remember, rest is productive. In the beginning periods of my life, I thought rest was a waste. I thought sleep was a waste. I thought, my God, why do we have to sleep? And the older I get, I realize that rest actually is productive. Number four is to make flexible to-do lists. Having a well-structured 
daily plan is great, but you need to have some room for flexibility. Many people fail in time management because they can't follow their plan due to unexpected circumstances. Let's be honest, you can't expect your day to be exact carbon copy of yesterday. And the same is true with your energy. You might have eaten the same healthy food, slept the same number of hours, and had the same quality of rest, but there would be a time when you would still feel so sluggish. Or maybe you have beautifully planned out your day, but suddenly your pet or your kid gets sick, or your little child accidentally spills some milk on your laptop. Life happens. You never really know what your day will look like. If you don't have room for flexibility, the most common reaction would be beating yourself up, or at worst, giving up on your entire plan for the day because one plan was ruined. I know it can be frustrating when you've already envisioned what your day would look like, but remember, you're not perfect and neither is the people around you. So even your laptop or printer could be faulty at some times, right? Accept that fact and understand that one ruined or shitty day doesn't need to ruin your entire plan and affect your whole being. Time management techniques are great, especially if you find what works for you. But managing your energy, allocating them by the energy level required, and refilling them through rest would be the most realistic and practical for most people. Thank you for watching, and if you found this content valuable, give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe. If you want more tips on time management, check out this video next. This is how successful people manage their time next.